Hello, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Informa Farmer Insights. We're here at the Bio Europe meeting, which is uh, being hosted in Cologne. And I'm joined by uh, Peter Fong, who is the um, uh, Associate Director Oncology Business Development at Genentech. And he's, uh, he's come all the way from South San Francisco. So uh, greetings, Peter. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. So Genentech is a big player in the oncology space. So you know, what is your role in oncology business development? Are you looking to in-license assets or is your role uh, an out-licenser? Yeah, so my role specifically in Genentech is to try and find the best science, the best therapeutics I can, and partner with those companies and bring so we can add those uh, that great those great molecules to our pipeline. So that's my role specifically. Genentech as a partnering unit, um, we'll do in licensing deals, we'll do acquisitions on on occasion, um, collaborations, um, anything that we can do to partner with the best companies we can and develop the best science that we can. Right. So, so you mentioned that you're looking for great science. Do you have a shopping list? Are there sort of targets that you would like to bring into the sort of the oncology home? Yeah, there, there, there are. Um, so, generally, we are uh, focused broadly on cancer. Um, as you probably know from our history, we've, we've been innovative in a lot of areas with a lot of different formats. Uh, that being said, clearly cancer immunotherapy is an area of focus for us. Um, and you know, within cancer immunotherapy, we are not just focused on the T-cell and T-cell targets, we're also looking at non-T-cell targets as well. Um, and we're also not just focused on cancer immunotherapy. I mean, I think if you look at molecular oncology, um, ADCs is an area that we have invested heavily in. We'll continue to do that. Um, Bi-specific uh, antibodies, by specific formats, we're, 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 we're focused on. Um, degraders, um, hormone signaling, oncogenic signaling. So there, there's um, a lot of areas that we are looking at um, and just trying to find, the, the again, the best science that we can find. But is there anything that's top of the shopping list that you know, if you could come to this meeting and actually you know, find that piece of technology or that asset, you yeah. know, what, would it, what would it look like? You know, I wouldn't necessarily say that there's anything that's at the top of our shopping list right now. I mean, clearly we just did PCV, the buying tech deal. Uh, that was something that we thought was uh, very important for our, for, for our pipeline, for cancer patients, uh, for cancer immunotherapy. And that's something that we wanted to do. And it was the right fit at that time. I think that um, we do have a shopping list, but I wouldn't want to say, and I wouldn't say that there's any one thing at the very top of it. Um, but uh, cancer immunotherapy in general is, is a, a huge area of focus for us. So, okay, so you said you're looking for good science, but what, what, do the, what do the assets actually have to look like? I mean, how well developed does the science have to be for it to get, grab your attention? Yeah, so I would say that we don't typically do deals that are phase two or later. Uh, so we prefer to be on the earlier side. I think that um, Usually, the you know the, the the newer technologies clearly are on the earlier side. Um, we, we we think that we have a deep scientific expertise in this space, and in some ways that gives us an advantage at looking at earlier technologies because we can bring our scientists scientists into the process, the diligence process. Um, but preclinical, the phase one, I would say, um, you know, and we'll even do collaborations even sort of earlier than that uh, that uh, might not be a, a direct deal right away, but there, there, there would be a collaboration work with our research group um, in those situations. And you know, when you sort of do that kind of deal, particularly when it's early, early stage, you know, so obviously the, the originators uh, have invested a lot of, sort of intellectual capital in, in, in that project. How, how, how engaged does Genentech Come in that collaboration. I mean, so, you know, what what would a sort of a typical arrangement look like after a deal signed? You mean? Yeah. It it, it really it, it depends on the deal. I mean, if you, if, if you look at the the buying tech deal, uh, both parties are going to be very involved in that, um, and we're clearly going to be uh, focused on that from a development standpoint with with uh, um, every every effort that we can make. Um, in other situations, uh, you know, in licenses, maybe it, it's you know a little bit more, um, a little bit less of a of a um, mutual effort in that situation. But uh, Genentech generally is is always very involved in any asset that it brings in. Right, and should, I mean, just if we just talk um, specifically about the BioNTech deal, so how did you? spot that asset in the first place? I mean, was it at a meeting like this or was it 
trawling through this sort of the research literature. How, how did that come about? Yeah. Well, well, well I mean, BioNTech uh, clearly is what you know was one of the leading biotech companies in Europe. So they were long on our radar. We we, we knew we knew about them. Um, our scientists also have very uh, deep respect for each other. Um, Ira Melman, Lele Delamar, um, from our side, who actually were had a vaccine program going on for many years before that. Um, so when BioNTech came up, uh, they were a natural uh, partnering choice for us. They had what we thought was a first-in-class asset. They had very compelling um, tumor-specific T-cell uh, proof-of-concept data that they showed us. They demonstrated that they were clearly uh, had a lot of expertise in the end-to-end -end process for manufacturing and for making the vaccine for every patient individual basis. So they, they, were, they were really um, a natural fit for us. And would it be fair to say that the sort of the deal structure there is the kind of deal structure that you would be happy or you would look to establish with, with other partners? I mean, I think that the it's a little bit tough to to say because you, you, if you think about the BioNTech deal, it's um, there are a lot of things that were different about it for us. So Genentech had never done mRNA before. Um, we typically focus on small molecules, antibodies, TDBs, things like that. We'd never done mRNA, mRNA before. Um, we not we weren't a vaccine company prior to this, no. so that's new. We had never done a personalized therapy before um, on this scale, so it, it's a little bit apples and oranges. To but but it's but it's kind of interesting because there there are all these things that Genentech doesn't do, and yet you were still able to to do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, Genentech has al always been an innovator um, in our space, in our in our in our sector, and will continue to do that. And I think that it, it shows that. Uh, we are very willing to take on risks if we believe in the science, uh, if we believe in the team that we're partnering with, um, and we believe in the importance of what... It so, so, as a final question, what is your, um, your target in terms of the number of kind of deals that you would like to, to be bringing in? I mean, you know, what, 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 what have you told your, your bosses? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we you know, we don't... Um, necessarily have a target number of deals and I'm, I'm sorry I'm not giving the, yeah. the answer that you're looking for I mean, we, we just basically so we signed two clinical stage deals all right so we did those in pretty quick succession if there is great science out there and if it's a good fit for our portfolio we're, right. we're gonna we're gonna do the deal right. um, if it's not then we, we, we probably aren't right. but um, you know my my boss never told me oh don't do that deal because right. we can't do more deals yeah and so okay great well, Peter, thanks for stopping by and uh, have, have a good rest of the meeting. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you.